Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video, I'm going to cover the Windows Story object as part of Snowman 1.3. The Snowman Story format doesn't have much in the way of documentation, as of this writing anyway, but that doesn't mean there aren't useful functions behind the scenes. As Snowman doesn't have built-in macros, JavaScript, and jQuery especially, must be used to reference the existing functionality around global properties like those in the window story object. Now, in JavaScript normally, there is a window global object when run in the browser that has details about the window, sort of this whole thing here. In the case of Twine, when we're running it, there's an additional story object that's part of the window global object, which means it's accessible throughout a story and is not part of any one single passage or one single function scope within JavaScript. This gives us access to a number of different things as part of the snowman story format. So we call things using window story and then something else. In this case we can get the name of the story, we can get the ID of the start passage, which is one. We can also get whatever program was used to create the story, which is not particularly helpful right now because we know it's twine because we're using twine to make it but it's something that's added for future reference. We can also get arrays of information about the story and not just single string or number properties. Like with Harlow and Sugarcube, it is possible to access information about the passages in the story via an AP around in Snowman, the window story interface, as I was discussing. And in this case, we can iterate through each passage that is within the story using the window story API which will make more sense when we look at the code in just a few moments. <clears throat> as well as properties, we can also look at functions that are part of Windows Story as well. Like with the other story formats, there are not just properties and values, but functions too, like I just said. To get information about a passage, we can use window story passage. This whole construction construction here using the window global object, the story object as part of window, and then the function passage as part of story with the name of a passage in a story. So like in other story formats, we can get information about a passage in the story. We can also use window story rend to parse and return the content of a passage as parsed by the internal twine rendering function as part of story here. And here's a demonstration, which will make more sense when we look at the code, but we see in here is some content, which is from another passage, using the window story passage construction. We can also get the name of a passage unconnected and extra text in the same way. Now that's all a lot of information, so let's go look at the code itself. So we see from the start passage, it's pointing at another passage through a window to a story. Progressing to that passage, we start to see a lot of the code usage. Now remember, Snowman doesn't have any built-in macros. It has some built-in API as we're going to cover here, and so we have to use JavaScript and jQuery a little bit here to access the built-in functionality that's part of Snowman but isn't macro usage, and so it's written in JavaScript. So we notice the script element here, instead of a script macro in another story format, this is the script macro, or the script element, open here, close down here, and all that's in between is the use of JavaScript. So we see an initial variable here, property list, set to a string, the name of the story is, and then we see, as I mentioned, window story name. The name property of a story object as part of the window global object. So we can figure out, if we need to know, <clears throat> the name of a story, looking at this right here. And then we see the concatenation to property list of this initial string ID of the start passage, and then accessing the property start passage of the story object of the window object. So window story start passage. The same down here to get the program that was used, the creator program, property of window story creator. Again, not particularly useful all the time, but we have it if we need it. And we see finally some Java query here, uh, or some Java query, some JavaScript using the jQuery library, uh, looking for anything that has the ID log, which is right here, setting its HTML to be the string property list as we've been adding to throughout this. 
So I'm moving on to arrays of information. Now arrays of information gets a little arrays of information about the story gets a little trickier. So we're using the same idea before passage list, setting it to an empty string. Then we're using jQuery's each functionality to iterate through an array. Now the problem with this is that the window story passages array to give us access to the passages that are part of the story in Twine don't start with a zero index like arrays normally do. It starts with one, which in fact was what we saw right here. The ID of the start passage, which is a passage we started with, in this case start, conveniently, window story start passage was one as we saw in the result, not zero. And so we have to test for that to prevent an error. So if the index value using this function is not zero, then we concatenate passage list with the string passage, the passage name, and then a break rule, just so we can have them parsed out. So we can access the passages within the story using window story passages, which has all of the passages as part of the story, not just those that are connected to other ones as we saw. So calling this, we get passage name. And then again, like we used before, look for log, change its HTML to whatever we pass into this. And then as we saw in practice, we saw the name of each passage as processed here. So let's look at functions. Well, it progresses in the same way here. We have start script element, ending script element. And then we're using window story render first here to render the content of the passage include me. Now let's pause here for a second and go look at that passage. Now as we see include me just says and here is some content. So it's rendered. And then again, using the same functionality we have been using jQuery, look for log, change its HTML, add passage content. Down here though, is where it gets a little more advanced. And we say, okay, for passage details, set it to the content, set it to the passage unconnected. So using window story passage, look for a passage with the name unconnected. And we'll pause here to go look at that. Unconnected extra text. So okay, set passage detail to be equal to the passage with the name unconnected. Down here, we see the same idea again. Look for passage details, ID, change its HTML to this whole string. The name of the passage is passage detail name, name being a property of a passage object, and then source being another property of a passage object. So we looked for using a functionality of passage of story, something called unconnected, then we have its name and we have its source. Now notice this is just the source that's unprocessed. If we wanted to actually render it, we would use the render function, but here we're just using the source. And we can go into a little more detail about the additional markup that's part of Snowman that is of course as well documented, but if we wanted just the source without it being parsed and rendered, we would use this. If we wanted to render it, just use the render function. Similar to how SugarCube has access to the source of a passage and then another function to render that source in a different way. So we see here a number of different properties. We can get the name, the creator, as well as the ID of the start passage and a couple of other things from the window story object properties. We can also use the functions of passage to look up a passage within the story or render to render a passage using the same similar construction within the, same, within the story the same way. Now again, we're remembering that Snowman doesn't have any built-in macros, but it does have this built-in API, these built-in functionality that we can access through using JavaScript to do similar things that we could do in other story formats. But again, and as it's sort of presented, it's a much more advanced story format that has a lot less functionality and allows the creator or designer to do a lot more. Now remember to change story formats to end here. We click on the name of the story in Twine and then we click on change story format. 
And here I've selected Snowman 1.3. And notice it says a minimal story format for author's experience with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. As I've demonstrated here, where we can access the functionality using JavaScript and jQuery, which is part of Twine, to access different parts of this functionality and handle different properties and different functions to do different things. Thanks for watching.